Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more experience as we linger on the mountaintop of Sinai. I invite you to the book of Exodus. We are at chapter 19. We'll start at verse 10 and work our way to verse number 12. It reads as follows in the King James Version. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it, Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be put to death. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we invite his presence in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name this morning. As we venture into this week, how we pray, dear Lord, that we may meet you. How we pray, dear Lord, that you can appear before all the people. For now, appear in your word, so that we may see you visibly and hear you speak to us. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, Amen. My dear friends, just five points as we start the week. I love the way God gives the children of Israel notice, and he says, in three days I'm going to come down. May I challenge you as you go into the workspace, make it a habit to give people notice. This has been known as a basic right, and God leads by example. He does not take anyone by ambush. I know those who just walk into other people's offices and call them to meetings. Take not Exodus says, give them notice. They are those who decide to just call meetings haphazardly and all the time. Learn from the book of Exodus as you start your working week. Give people notice. It is not only a basic right, it is a God-given expectation of each and every one of us. At point number two, I love the way the Lord now says unto Moses, make sure these people, they wash their clothes. They are at the best in terms of their apparel and appearance. As when they are ready, Moses, tell them as and when they are ready, I will appear to all the people. God appears to all the people on Mount Sinai and allow me to fast forward to the book of 2 Thessalonians. I think it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Bible says, And the Lord shall appear with a shout, and all the eyes shall see him. Those of us who are alive, the, the Apostle Paul says, we will not precede those who are dead because every eye should see the Lord when he appears for the second time. And may I challenge you this morning, the Lord has given us notice. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Notice has been served. All that remains is for us to prepare to meet our Lord. Prepare to meet your God, or Israel says, they are the prophet Amos. And I want to say unto you this morning, prepare to meet your God, O child of God, when he shall appear. For he who is to come shall not tarry, and he will definitely come. At point number two, make it a point that when he comes, you will see him with your own eyes. And this reminds me of that song, face to face with God, my savior. Face to face, how long shall it be before we see him break the eastern skies? May this be at the fore of your mind as you go throughout the day, as you go throughout this working week, plan to meet him face to face and see him. At point number three, you know, when the Lord called Moses, it was in chapter 3. He calls him before the burning bush and then he says, Moses, this place is holy. Take off your sandals for this place is holy. And then the next thing he says, Moses, move no further. Now he calls the children of Israel to the foot of the mountain. And he says, Moses, prepare this. Make sure there is a boundary. Make sure there are boundaries around the mountain so that the children of Israel will never come up so that no livestock is going to stray into the presence of God. God is a God of boundaries. If we cannot accept this, then we have no time to relate to our God. 
God says, I love you. God says, you are my child. God says, you, bear, you are born in, in, in my likeness. You have my image. But even then, there are boundaries. You do not do things anyhow. God says, I have limits here and no further. I have said this before and I will repeat it for emphasis. He is our father, but not our body. He is our brother, but not our body. He is not the person we say any nonsense to. God says, remember this, I am God. I am holiness and in the presence of sin, I am a consuming fire. At point number four, as we near the end, notice what he says. He says, this you shall take note of. Number one, no one shall ascend the mountain. This mountain, no one shall go up on it. Number two, no one shall touch it. God addresses issues of distance. No one shall change their position relative to myself and the mountain. Do not come close. Stay where you are. That is God being specific. His laws and commands are specific in terms of position. Secondly, he says, no one shall even touch it. No experiment. You shall not exercise any physical change of your position. But above all, you shall not even come into contact with the mountain. God simply says, I am not telling you to remain where you are, but I'm even telling you, don't even try the minutest, minutest of any venture towards sin. It is unacceptable. Some of us can walk the whole way through sin and make it to the mountain top of sin. But God says, even those who just taste it with their fingers, touch it and feel it, you are contaminated. The laws of God are simple. Do not commit adultery. Secondly, do not even look after a woman to lust after her. You have touched sin. You are equally the same. You shall not murder. Now for you to touch the mountain, he simply says, do not even hate a brother. When you do so, you have touched it. You are as good as dead. Keep the Sabbath day holy. And when he says, keep the Sabbath day holy, go to Isaiah. He says, now make sure you marshal your mind and bring it and make sure your thoughts do not wander away from the Sabbath because you may be present in the day of rest and yet you have been touching sin with your mind. I love the way God is so specific. My dear friends, as we go out even into the workplace, make sure you take note of these things. Those who pay attention to detail are going to be the exceptional employees for they know in terms of position, I should not go that far. Even as far as touching, I should not even incline myself towards doing the wrong. At point number five, as we come to an end, now the Lord says, whosoever toucheth the mount shall be put to death. As you go on and you read further, it says, even if it's a mountain, I mean, even if it's, a, it's livestock, it shall be shot dead on the spot. God is simple and clear. Number one, whatever is going to um, do the wrong, whether it be a human being or livestock, it shall be put to death. Go to Romans. For the wages of sin is death. There is no second guessing what will happen. You do this, this is the outcome, death. So you do a bit of sin, death. Touch a bit, dead. Walk towards it, dead. The answer is always the same. God doesn't want us to think very hard. He wants us to know and he makes us know ahead of time. This has been the stance before it continues to be the stance to this day. Our four parents were told, if you eat of the forbidden fruit, you shall surely die. Now the children of Israel are being told, if you touch, you will surely die. My friends, as we come to the end of this day, I do not wish for anyone to die during the course of this week. I look forward to meeting you again on Friday. As the Lord ushers us into this week, take note. He wants to give you notice. Give others notice too. And above all, he is a God who appears to all. None of us has an exclusive privilege or right of seeing God. When he shall appear, he will appear to all of us at the second coming. And there are boundaries that he has set before we get there. There are 10 of them. Study those boundaries and make sure you do not cross them. And above all, at point number four, 
we serve a God who is specific, gives us direction on how far to go and what not to do. And above all, the wages of sin is death. Until we meet again, may God bless you, may God keep you. Amen.